Hello and welcome. Before we start this real world project lab on VMware ESXi, I would like to remind people that why are you watching this video? Keep in mind that this is for the entry level uh, IT professionals and the reason you would need to know about this lab is familiar with servers, desktop virtualization, Hyper-V and VMware. In your virtual training, you have learned about the Hyper-V and VMware. At this point, I feel like this should give you a clear understanding and also some learning about virtualization. So let's get to the real server and later on we're going to get back into our web browser to demonstrate the access. Hello everyone, welcome back to our virtualization project videos now. This is the VMware project that I'm building. As you can see the networking is done, so the networking I mean, is pretty messed up but this is a lab environment. And this is a 710 server uh, with a little bit higher processor, I think it's 3.3. Uh, which is should be okay with the 6.7 VMware uh, USB. So I already plugged in in the back VMware 6.7. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure you watch my first videos. This is a part of our training. So USB is already plugged in. RAM is already uh, plugged in. It's a 96 GB RAM, uh, 16 GB modules, each 16 GB. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on. And one TB hard disk is already put in this machine. So we're going to find out if that 1TB hard disk is normal. Now, when you hear the noise like that, that's because the cover is not on that. So this is the, the reason for that is to, when you have uh, a RAM installed, sometimes you may do a mistake or a RAM is not working correctly, then you may want to just quickly change things by turning it off. Of course, you want to use some safety measures for static stuff like that, you know, static key, whatever they call it. So make sure you do that. But since this is a lab environment, I really don't care about it. So the thing about this is this. It's going to come up now and we're going to set up VMware uh, vSphere on this server. Okay? That is going to be our goal and we'll show you at the end how it's going to get an IP address and everything. My networking is already done. Uh, all I have to do is you can use anything like a, a router or something. I have a switch. So I'm going to plug that into this and let's go back to that server and then I'm going to get the the information all right so the first thing we're going to do is to uh to make sure when you're doing this any new server make sure you go to the f2 and do the virtualization part don't forget that i've showed that in my first videos but in this i'm going to make sure i go and create a virtual hard disk if it's not already in there because this hard disk i just plugged it in so the first thing i'm going to do is to make sure my hard disk is created in this uh, you know uh, server and then later on if this has issues or partition issues then we can use other tools but I feel like we should be okay so if you install your memory correctly you shouldn't get any errors you should see 96 in there uh, if you have a if you have put it the wrong way then you need to research on that server how do you put the memories in the modules you can see I put white 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 and white 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 16 GB in all but this is the, the kind of like the way this server works. So you have to open up a manual and make sure you are doing it correctly. Now I'm waiting for control R on the server. And once I get that, I'm just going to hit control R and I'm going to get to the server. Now, if you want to remove all these messages that you're not using, for example, I have some other cards for like fiber stuff like that. So if you feel like you don't want to see all these messages, you can remove all these extra cards from there that you're not using and now I'm going to hit control R so this is where I wanted you guys to be in because a lot of people will get stuck in here so what you want to do is in this keyboard I'm going to hit on the right key you see as soon as I hit that if that doesn't work click enter once you click enter you get this message um, you know this error that's fine so once you get that you know that it's not working hit F2 you see, when I hit F2, I get this message. The first thing I want to do is to clear the config. So once you clear the config, after that, you click F2 again, and then clear the foreign settings. And we're going to clear that as well. So now if you see this, if you come back and hit Enter, you see I can see the information now. So you're going to hit Space. You see I hit Space, and then move on to the name. I'm going to click a name and I click enter. So 
So once you click enter, click OK, then you can come back here and then you see right here, I can click on it again, I can go back and other things. If I do F2, another thing you should do is you should initialize this to make sure it works uh, correctly. So I'm going to do a fast initialization and I'm going to click enter and you see it's pretty fast, it's going to go out there and done. And now I'm going to restart my server and install VMware ESXi on it. And it should work. If not, we still have to do some other things with it. But at this point, it should work. If not, then you have to put some of the, like an XP or some partition tool that can delete that hard disk. Totally partition, everything get deleted. Uh, and then you're going to do this process again. And then it will work with the VMware ESXi. So now, if the computer starts the server, I want to start this from my what? My USB that I plugged in, in there. So I'm going to put my USB and then start the server from USB. Okay, since I know everything is working now, memory is good, no issues. I can later on come back and put more memory in there, but I wanted to put the cover in there just to make this noise go away. Uh, so make sure the cover is correctly, uh, you know, covered like this and there's no spaces or don't just push these things because you're gonna mess it up so make sure it's a pretty nice smooth process you put the cover like this way they'll tilt it so you put it this way and then it goes slide in very easily so now we're going to start our machine I'm gonna hit F11 I think I missed that in the beginning but I think I can still do it I'm gonna click F11 and now I'm gonna start this a server from a USB and you see now it, it found that virtual hard disk that we created before it was giving us an error um, because that's where you're going to find out that you cannot install things on it. So in the servers, depending on what server you use, you need to create this, uh, this whole setup. If you're using HP, look into how to create a virtual hard disk, uh, to how to get to that F2 information for HP or other servers. For this one, it works. Uh, for Dell 710, 720, all this, it works this way. So now I'm going to go, so now when I hit F11, this is the screen that I'm seeing. I want to start my machine from a USB. It's in the back and it tells you right there it's in the back. So now if I click enter, you see it says 6.7 and I'm going to install 6.7 on this uh, USB. So I'm going to click on, sorry, on this server. So this is the ESXi installation right now. And if we're successful, we have created everything correctly, then we shouldn't have any issues. So just keep in mind that when you're installing 6.7, remember in our first videos, you have to know if your processors are supported by this version of ESXi. So as you can see, this is a CPU 5680 and it's 3.33 gigahertz. So if it's lower than that, I feel like it's not going to be supported on 6.7. Uh, 2.3 is not supported because I do have other servers in the same model, 710, and it has a lower uh, processor. So you really need to look into this. This is your research part right there. You need to do your research before you invest into RAM, memory, hardware, everything that you invest in these. Look at these servers, right? These are all uh, Windows servers because this could not be converted into 6.7. Now I could put 6.5 on it, but hey, you know, we want to do more lab stuff. So we put a uh, server on that, that's uh, uh, Windows servers. And here this is supported, so we're using uh, the um, 6.7. So this is the first screen you're going to get. And even here you're going to see some compatibility messages that they want you to know. And I'm going to click F11 here. Once you click F11, it's going to scan the hard disk and tell you that how much space do you have in this hard disk so scanning that it tells you right now right now that you have about 2 TB there are some space reserved and that's about 2 TB right there the first one we need to pick not the USB one so we're gonna click enter and then we're gonna go to US and here we're going to put the root password so once you put the password you're gonna get another warning we're going to click enter and it's gonna tell you okay everything will be erased from this disk yes sure and now ESX 6.7 is installing so we should be okay but at this point if you get any error that it cannot be installed due to some issue and I'm not sure why my phone is not working with this because of the resolution but here 
uh, you can see this will be fully done and after that this server will restart with ESXi 6.7 and that's where we're gonna move on with some of the the things we can do here on the server later you're gonna open a browser and you're gonna get into this uh, just like what we do in our labs so this is a pretty quick process as you can see it's, it's done like in, in a minute you know and we're gonna click enter and this server will get restarted now and now next time it will boot with this operating system so what we did right now we installed ESX vSphere operating system ESXi vSphere operating system on this server this is not like the one we did the Windows there's no operating system this one has a menu Windows operating system and then we install Hyper-V here we just install ESXi operating system directly so you can only get an IP address and some basic information if that IP address is not working you as an administrator or a help desk whoever is working on these machines are going to come here and check and can, can, can access it directly uh, by doing things with it maybe there's an IP issue maybe there's a uh, some other weird issue that is going on that you need to come here physically to fix this issue other than that you really don't do anything here you just go to the browser and everything is managed from the browser now like I mentioned before that vSphere is just a host then you will get more hosts like this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten whatever however many you want and you will get vCenter that's going to be another application that will be controlling every server from one screen now we're not going to do that because that's more advanced it's not something for help desk then you want to become more of a, of a virtual administrator VMware administrator for that kind of stuff Now this is not from USB, this is directly coming from hard disk. You may want to remove USB from before this when you restarted the machine, you should, you should remove that just in case you don't reinstall it again. So there you go, you got uh, IP address right there, 172, 192.168.10.4, .10 so that is the IP address that we will need and if you come here and let's say if you get any issues, the first thing you should do, check the cable and look at the light, it's green and other thing you should check, if it's still not working, then you may want to see if your network card in that server is correctly working I had issues with one of these cards and I had to remove it put a new one so these are the things that you need to be careful because some may have a driver or you got it from some eBay or something that may not be compatible with the server so you gotta be you gotta do a lot of research before you invest anything into these servers uh, so here's what I was talking about that what do you do next here you only work on let's like say you click F2 it's gonna ask you for the password once you put the password, this is the information that you will see right here. Configure network management, restart network, uh, the network, test the network, uh, you know, logs. This is for more of a sysadmins, uh, whoever is controlling the virtual stuff. If there's an issue with the server, then they can come straight to these logs right here and reset information, reset some things, get a password reset or something like that. A lot of, uh, you know, management type of work on this side. But what do you do after this? You basically cancel this information and you're going to go to the browser. So let's go to the browser and just log in and see this is something that you guys already covered in the labs. And this is something that we also give you in the live training. Uh, one of the, you know, the management machine where you play around with the virtual stuff so you can learn this stuff. So as from the hardware part of part, that's it. You don't do anything else for as a help desk, of course. As a sysadmin or they, they of course it's a little bit more than that they will have more controlled environment uh, more racked environment may have kvms in, connected to it but that's nothing to, for you to work now that we have installed the server let's go go ahead and access and configure it for the first time so the first thing you need to do is to connect on the same network your laptop wi-fi network connection has to be on the same network so let's go ahead and to HTTPS you have to use HTTPS even though on the console it says HTTP so we're going to put the IP address 162.10.4 
and as soon as you do that you will get a warning like this and we're going to click advance and then accept the risk because we already know this is safe and we already know the IP address this is the login that you have created in the beginning so let's go ahead and log in and once you log in like this this is the first message you're going to get in this so I'm not gonna say no, I don't want to join. This is a lab environment here. You got some uh, vulnerability stuff, which lab environment, you wouldn't care much. But in the real environment, you may have to consider upgrading your uh, version. Maybe you need to download a, a new version. This is update one. As you can see, there's an update three available at this point. So I can just cancel this information right here. So some of the things you need to consider that this is a 60 days access a trial access so either you need to get a free version and once you get a free version then it limits the ability for you so when you click on manage go to licensing and here you will assign the license as soon as you do that it's going to remove most of these features which you really don't need in the beginning for help this learning because you don't need to use this at that level so when you put a you, you assign the free license it's just gonna remove all of this and just give you a basic level uh, access but that basic level is extremely powerful still you can use I can put let's say 256 GB RAM the only limitation that I see in this is that when you create a virtual machine it only allows you to um, you know pick um, only eight vCPUs so for example if I come here and I go to the host and I want to know how many CPUs that I have available so you see right here is 12 CPUs physical CPU but if I do this I have logical 24 processors available so one virtual machine when you create you can only give eight vcpus you cannot give 24 out of it so that is the only limitation but when will you need to use eight cpus for a machine virtual machine that is pretty high and i don't know why you will need this at this level you can only assign two and that's more than enough but if you want to put more you can do so till eight so uh there's a lot of, uh it, once you do this it enables you uh to learn unlimitedly like i said uh this is the stuff that we already covered in our uh training of, uh so if you're new and you're watching this and you think that why am i not showing you uploading the iso virtual machine i have already covered this in this training so please watch the playlist i am i will share that playlist link in the description so click on this and there is a vmware management uh video this is a lab video just wanted to show you the hardware side of it how i configured everything on a real hardware as i didn't show that in my first videos so here you can access it clearly and then you can follow the other video where you where i created the the virtual machine and everything but if you want to access this through uh a, like a ssh or something then you need to come to action and click here and enable ssh and you're going to get this warning and just cancel that and then after that you can enable the console shell you're going to get another warning and here we have a server ready now of course it depends on your business my business is that i need to put like 256 gb ram on it and configure it and then use it for whatever purpose i have labs and everything but for you if you're a member and you're taking live courses by going to live training and you have registered in our live training you don't have to do this part all of this because you've already seen the hardware side now the main part for you to learn is going to be the the virtual side of it and that's where our members get an access through a web browser so they're in their own lab like this where we give them machines and we train them on different type of skills and one of the skills is actually training on a virtual environment so in your lab you get like five machines and you get one management machine with those that the machine that you're actually working on so here you can come and manage your own machines your esxi you can see this member is a uh, 400 member and he can come over here he can change his cpu for the virtual machines so we give you a full backend access to these uh, virtual machines in the live environment only so when you become a live uh, when you pay for the live membership, uh, sorry, the, the training, then you get access to this and we train you on this stuff too as this member is doing it right now. So that is the, the, the final video for this virtualization training. If you have any questions, please let us know. But after this, you will proceed with other training that we are doing in our course, which is more like Active Directory, Domain, Deployments, Imaging, uh, Command Line Troubleshooting, Computer Troubleshooting, all that stuff needs to be then covered in your other machines like these one on the left side. As you can see, these are the machine that this member will be using for Domain Controller and Help Desk Machine and all of that needs to be covered on these machines then thank you so much and i'll see you in different type of training thank you